All right, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Let's get ready to uh, to start this morning. We have the first case, Michael Andrew, Berengard Rodriguez. Wow. Oh, can I get a parent from the state of Peter Schmier on behalf of the uh, Peter Schmier on behalf of the Public Defender's Office in Osceola. Hello, Your Honor. Good morning, sir. All right, sir, could you state your name? Good morning, for the sir. Uh, Michael Bernard Rodriguez, sir. Okay. All right. We don't have a case number for this one, uh, sir. Uh, I just want to advise you that you have the right to remain silent as anything you say can and will be used against you in a subsequent criminal proceeding. You do have the right to communicate with counsel, family, or friends, and if necessary, reasonable means will be provided to you. Um, does he qualify for the public defender? Yes, Judge. He was declared indigent by the Cook's office. Okay, perfect. Then I'll appoint the public defender. Uh, sir, you have been charged with um, a count of fraudulent mis uh, misuse of a credit card and petty theft in the first offense. Uh, court will set bond at $1,000 for the first uh, offense and $250 for the second offense. I also find that probable cause uh, has been determined. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Judge, the defendant is out on bond for Osceola County and Orange County on felony cases. Are you going to take any action on those? I'm not going to take any action on those. Thank you, Judge. Actually, bring it back for one second. Come on back, sir. Sir, come on back. Yes, John. Sir, also, you're not going to be able to uh, return to um, the 7-Eleven gas station located at 8540 West Early Oak Bronson Memorial Highway, all right? No problem, on that. I respect that. And, um, sir, um, as soon as I get back to my pot, I can bond out. Okay. The, well, the all right. Thank you, sir. I appreciate on, sir. it. Also, please don't commute. Please don't uh, consume any alcoholic or controlled substances without prescription. Perfect, sir. You have a good day, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, next one is Joel Luis Castillo Agramonte. Judge, Mr. Castillo Agramonte will need a Spanish interpreter. Okay, she is on the line. Good morning. Miss Interpreter? Yes, you're on. All right, good morning. I think we're going to need your services. Sir, could you please state your name for the record? Señor, por favor, diga su nombre para que conste en el acta. Joel Castillo. Okay. Joel Castillo. Mr. Castillo, I want to advise you that you have the right to remain silent, and that anything you say can be used against you. Señor Castillo, debo advertirle que usted tiene el derecho a permanecer en silencio y que todo lo que diga se podrá usar en su contra. You have the right to communicate with counsel, friends, and family. And if necessary, reasonable means will be provided to you. Usted tiene el derecho a comunicarse con un abogado, con sus amigos y familia, y si fuera necesario, se le brindarán los medios para ello. You have a right to representation by counsel. Uh, does he qualify for representation by the Public Defender's Office? Yes, he was declared indigent. Okay, I will appoint the Public Defender. Usted tiene el derecho a que le represente un abogado. ¿Acaso reúne los requisitos para que le represente el defensor público? Sí, ya se le ha clasificado como indigente. Bien, en ese caso designará a la oficina del defensor público. The court has reviewed the charging affidavit and finds probable cause um, uh, for uh, uh, the count of battery. Luego de haber repasado la actividad acusatoria, determinó que existe indicio de criminalidad para sustentar la acusación de agresión física. Sir, I'm ordering you not to have any hostile or violent contact with the victim, Melanie Kie Kiesha Rios Rivera, and to maintain separate residences. Señor, le prohíbo todo tipo de contacto hostil o violento con la víctima, Melanie Kiesha Rios Rivera. Tendrá que vivir en una residencia separada. And the bond amount will remain at none. Judge, y se mantiene en prisión preventiva. May I intercede for a second? Yes, sir. I know you made a probable cause determination, but I do want to point out that in this case, the alleged victim does not wish to prosecute. She has no signs of injury on her. Admittedly, there was a 
um, a touching of, the, of his fiance, uh, Mr. Um, uh, Castillo Agramante, when he tried to get into the car, but I would argue that the, the level of touching does not rise to a criminal conduct in this case. No, it's I, not like he punched her, kicked her. I understand your point, but she's not here, and I can't hear from her. Without the ability to hear from her and question her and see what she wants to tell me, I've read the report, but I do find that there is probable cause uh, at this point in time. Yeah, Hi, Judge, thank you. Hang on, wait, I'm sorry, I, hang on. May I please interpret what has been said so far? Yes. One moment, State. Ya sé que su señoría estableció que existe indicio de criminalidad, pero uh, en este caso la presunta víctima no desea presentar cargos si no muestra signos de lesiones corporales. Se le acusa a él de haberla tocado cuando trataba de hacerla entrar en el vehículo, pero eh, las uh, circunstancias no llegan a una acusación penal porque no fue tampoco que la golpearan, que le diera puños, que le diera patadas. Él lo ha dicho, le entiendo, pero como ella no está presente y no ha presentado su testimonio, no puedo tomar otra decisión, por tanto, permanecerá en vigor mi determinación de que existe indicio de criminalidad. Um, yes, Your Honor. The victim is um, actually, she is present here this morning. She wasn't able to come up because I think her ID um, isn't. She did not have a paper. A, the jail ID. policy requires you to have a physical copy. Yes. The yes. actual ID with you. She only had a copy. Yes, correct. Um, I did speak with her. Um, she, um, Her name was Melanie Rios Rivera. Um, she said that there was, there's been no history of domestic violence. She, she said, um, she felt that it was really just a misunderstanding, um, that it was someone else had called the police, it wasn't her. She does, she did tell me she does feel safe at home, um, that the defendant is a good person, that she does want him to come home. Okay, hang on, wait. Let's let the, let's let the translator translate all that. Su señoría, la víctima sí está presente, pero no pudo subir porque no tiene el ID físicamente. Sí, para poder entrar tiene que tener el ID original y ella solamente tenía su documento de identificación, pero una copia. Su señoría, yo hablé con la víctima, la señorita Melanie Ríos Rivera, y ella me comunicó que no existen antecedentes de violencia y que todo parece haber sido un malentendido, que fue otra persona quien llamó a la policía, que ella se siente segura, que el acusado es una buena persona y que ella quiere que regrese a la casa. Um, that's all from the state, Your Honor. I would leave it in your discretion. Okay. <clears throat> Counsel for the PD. Um, anything further based on I'm sorry? The state? Anything further from you based on what the state said? No, I think this reinforces my argument that this was not a criminal conduct. It may have been um, incidental, unwanted touching, but it doesn't rise to the level of a crime. So, so based on that, I'm asking you to find no probable cause. State, any argument? Um, the state would argue there is probable cause. There was a touching. Um, you know, the police were concerned at the time. Um, if if your honor finds no probable cause, the state would ask for a 24-hour reset to try to get some more information from the arresting officer. I'm sorry, your honor. May I please have a moment to interpret? I was just about to ask you to translate. <laughs> Fiscalía tiene algo más que agregar, no su señoría, eso es todo, lo dejamos a su discreción. El defensor público tiene algo más que agregar luego de lo que ha dicho la fiscalía. Su señoría, ese argumento sustenta mi punto de que no se trata de una conducta criminal, sino de algo que parece haber sido incidental y por tanto le pedimos que determine que no existe indicio de criminalidad. ¿Qué dice la fiscalía al respecto? La fiscalía plantea que sí existe indicio de criminalidad, que él la tocó uh, sin eh, que fuera su deseo, que la policía tenía suficiente preocupación como para escribir el documento. Y si su señoría determina que no existe indicio de criminalidad, le solicito 24 horas para suplementar el informe. Okay, the court's going to well, continue to hold its finding that there was probable cause and we'll set a bond at $500. Judge, uh, just to verify. Si existe indicio de criminalidad y se establece fianza de 500 dólares. Did you order no hostile contact and separate residence? No, no contact and maintain separate residences, correct. Para and Judge, the defendant is also. Emitió prohibición de contacto hostil y que vivieran en casas separadas. No, prohibición de contacto y no pueden vivir en la misma casa. The defendant is also out on bond for an Osceola County case of trespassing. Will you be taking action on that? No, sir. I will not be taking any action on. 
Su señor el acusado además se encuentra libre de fianza por un caso de entrada ilícita, es un caso de Ciola. No, en el caso de 194172 no tomaré ninguna acción. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Gracias, señor. Thank you. All right, next case, uh, Christian Alexander Coriano Santiago. Judge, Mr. Coriano Santiago will need a Spanish interpreter. Okay. All right, good morning, sir. Good morning, morning sir. Señor. Could you please state your name for the record? Por favor, diga su nombre para que consten actas. Christian Alexander Coriano Santiago. Christian Alexander Coriano Santiago. Sir, I just want to advise you of a couple rights that you have. You have the right to remain silent. Is anything you say can be used against you? Señor, quiero advertirle de algunos derechos de los que usted goza. Tiene el derecho a permanecer en silencio porque todo lo que usted diga podrá ser usado en su contra. You have the right to communicate with counsel, family, and friends, and if necessary, reasonable means will be provided to you. Tiene el derecho a comunicarse con un abogado, con su familia y con sus amigos, y se le brindarán los medios necesarios si ese fuera el caso. Uh, you have the right to representation by counsel. Uh, does he qualify for representation by the public defender's office? Yes, he does. I will we'll appoint the public defender. Tiene derecho a que le represente un abogado. ¿Acaso reúne los requisitos para que se le designe al defensor público? Sí, su señoría. Bien, se le designe al defensor público. Uh, the court has reviewed the charging affidavit and finds that there's probable cause for the two counts, count one, driving with a suspended and revoked license, and count two, a suspended habitual traffic offender. Um, the bond will be set uh, at $500 for the first count and $2,500 for the second count. Judge Mr. Coriano Santiago. Se determina que existe indicio de criminalidad para sustentar ambas acusaciones. La primera es conducir con la licencia suspendida revocada y la segunda es conducir con la licencia suspendida habiendo sido clasificado como reincidente. En el primer caso se fija fianza de 500 dólares y en el segundo se fija fianza de 2.500 dólares. Judge Mr. Coriano Santiago um, is one of three people in this room who qualify for direct PTR. So rather than giving him a bond, I would ask that you simply release him on direct PTR. If you do not wish to do that, then I would uh, ask that you uh, change your bond um, set to give him a, uh, or release him on, on the first misdemeanor dwell list, because it is a double jeopardy issue when he gets arrested for both misdemeanor and felony dwell list for the same transaction. Su señoría, el señor Coriano Santiago es una de las tres personas que reúnen los requisitos para ser puesto en libertad directamente a través del programa de la libertad provisional. Por tanto, le pido que en lugar de fijarle una fianza, lo ponga en libertad a través de la, de la libertad provisional. Si ese no fuera el caso, le pido por favor que le fije fianza como si fuera una falta de primer grado y que no considere las dos acusaciones porque en ese caso entraría en vigor la ley del doble peligro. Any objection from, any, any statement from the state? Um, no, Your Honor. Okay. You take no position on the matter? tiene algo que agregar? No. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, he, uh, reviewing the face sheet, he does um, uh, meet the criteria for PTR uh, and that the risk acceptance results are low. Um, but my concern is, counsel, I have not been able to verify any community ties. Luego de revisar la hoja de cálculo, sí uh, veo que puede salir en libertad tras la libertad provisional y que se ha clasificado como riesgo bajo. Pero mi preocupación, licenciado, es que no he podido verificar sus vínculos con la comunidad. Judge, if you want to, you can take um, testimony from Mr. Coriannis Santiago, but based on um, our information, when we procured it from him this morning, he would reside at Claremont, specifically 400 East Highland Avenue. He's been living in Florida for three years. He's got an uncle, sister, and um, a girlfriend, as well as three dependents living in the area, and he's been gainfully employed for the last six months at a place called Bernard. So you could take testimony from Mr. Cristiano Coriano, but he does have some local ties. Su señoría, si quiere puede escuchar el testimonio del acusado. Sin embargo, a partir de lo que yo he hablado con él, me queda claro que él vive en el área de Clermont, específicamente en el 400 East Highland Avenue, que uh, lleva tres años residiendo en la Florida, que tiene un tío, un hermano, una hermana, perdón, que tiene a la novia, que tiene personas que dependen de él y que trabaja hace seis meses en un lugar que se llama Bernard. All right, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll change our ruling to direct PTR. He does qualify for it based on counsel's proffer. Um, uh, he does have ties to the community based on the interview. So I will, I'll release him on PTR for both counts one and two. Okay. 
Bien, entonces cambiaré mi decisión teniendo en cuenta lo que ha planteado el abogado partido y la comunicación que tuvo con él. Se establece que él tiene vínculos con la comunidad y se establece libertad provisional para los dos cargos, el uno y el dos. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Yes, sir. Same to you. All right, next case. Alberto Surio Gonzalez Gonzalez. Judge Hill need a Spanish interpreter also. Understood. Sir, good morning. Good morning, sir. I just want to advise you of a couple of rights that you have before we begin. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a subsequent criminal proceeding. Quisiera explicarle antes de comencemos algunos derechos de los que usted goza. Usted tiene derecho a permanecer en silencio. Todo lo que usted diga podrá ser usado y de hecho se usará en su contra en futuros procedimientos. You have the right to communicate with counsel, family, and friends, and if necessary, reasonable means will be provided to you. Usted tiene derecho a comunicarse con un abogado, con su familia, con sus amigos, y si fuera necesario, se le brindarán los medios para ello. And you have the right to representation by counsel. Does he qualify for the public defender's office? Yes, he does, Judge. All right, the court will appoint the public defender. Y tiene derecho a que le represente un abogado en caso de los requisitos para el defensor público. Sí, piensa designar defensor público para que les represente. The court has reviewed the charging affidavit and finds probable cause for uh, the the. The three charges: count one, a uh, battery; uh, count two, resisting without violence; and count three, a subsequent resisting without violence. Um, the court will set. Um, uh, he does not qualify for direct PTR. The court will set uh, bond in the amount of one thousand dollars for count one, the battery, and five hundred dollars each for the two <coughs> resisting arrest without violence charges. Luego de leer el documento acusatorio, se determina que existe indicio de criminalidad para las tres acusaciones. El primer cargo es agresión física, el segundo es desobediencia a la autoridad y el tercero es un cargo subsecuente de desobediencia a la autoridad. Se fija fianza, él no reúne los requisitos para ser puesto en libertad directamente a través de la libertad provisional. Por tanto, la fianza del primer cargo serán mil dólares, 500 en el segundo y 500 en el tercero. Also, sir, I'm ordering you to maintain a separate residence, that you are not to have any contact whatsoever with uh, Magdalas Sabello Navarez and to not return to the scene of the offense is at Windsor Metal Finishing, 1820 Avenue A. También, señor, se le prohíbe regresar, se le prohíbe vivir en la misma casa que la víctima, se le prohíbe el contacto con Magdalas Sabello Navarro, contacto de todo tipo, y se le prohíbe regresar a la dirección en la que ocurrieron los hechos. La 1020. Thank you very much. Judge Jimes, since you since you ordered no contact um, as part of a con, uh, bill of condition, I would ask that you allow Mr. Uh, Gonzalez Gonzalez to return to the uh, to the shared residence in the presence of a law enforcement officer one time only to pick up any personal items that he needs. I make the same request for Joel Castillo Agramonte, uh, defendant number two on the docket. The su señoría, ¿cómo usted le ha prohibido vivir en la misma casa? Le pido por favor que le permita regresar a la vivienda. No, única vez acompañado a las autoridades a recuperar toda pertenencia que necesita. Y le extiendo la misma solicitud para el caso de Castillo, que es el número dos en el calendario. Okay, the charging affidavit reflects that they've been living separately for approximately three weeks. El documento acusatorio refleja que hace aproximadamente tres semanas que ellos no viven juntos. I only make that request on, on his behalf in case there's items he needs to procure from that residence. I know the first gentleman that we talked to, Mr. Joel Castillo Agramante, the fiance, I believe, share a residence. So I make it a standard request for every domestic violence battery case when there's a no contact provision that they're allowed to go back one time only with the law enforcement officer to get items they need. Okay. You can buy pero hay ciertos artículos que él necesita. Además, el primer acusado, Joel Castillo Gramonte, está viviendo con su prometida. Por tanto, hago esta solicitud extensiva a todos los casos de agresión física en los que se invoca prohibición de contacto, que sea una única vez y que sea siempre acompañado de las autoridades. All right, for, with regard to Mr. Agramonte and Mr. Gonzalez Gonzalez, I will um, I'll revise the conditions of any release to include a one-time return with law enforcement to return to retrieve any personal belongings. 
Bien, en el caso del de señor Aramonte y del señor González González, voy a cambiar mis provisiones anteriores para permitir que regresen una única vez a recuperar sus pertenencias personales acompañados de las autoridades. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, next one is Agni Maria Gonzalez Torellas. Good morning, ma'am. Do you need the services of an interpreter? No, Your Honor. Thank you. No. I do want to have the interpreter hang up. Hi, ma'am. Good morning. Could you please state your name for the record? Egmi Gonzalez. Hi. Ms. Gonzalez, I want to advise you of a couple rights that you have. You have the right to remain silent. Anything that you say can, use, can be used against you in a subsequent criminal proceeding. You have the right to communicate with counsel, family, and friends, and if necessary, reasonable means will be provided to you. You also have the right to be represented by counsel. Does she qualify for representation by the Public Defender's Office? Yes, she does. All right. The court will appoint the Public Defender. Uh, the court has reviewed the uniform charging affidavit and finds that there is probable cause um, for a for a, a claim of battery. Um, I'm going to set bond at a thousand dollars for the sole count of battery. I'm not going to permit any contact between uh, Miss Gonzalez and Greg George Gregory Chester, um, and she's not to return to the scene of the offense. Uh, located at uh, North, uh, 8 North Stewart Avenue. Uh, well, I'm sorry, scratch that. Uh, 1308 Robinson Avenue. He's saying no contact? And to maintain a separate residence. He did say no Counsel, can you advise if uh, it's unclear if they were still uh, living together? Can you advise if. Uh, yes, they were. Okay, the court will grant a one yes, time. They, yes, they were. A one time return. Uh, with law enforcement to retrieve any personal belongings. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next matter is Michael Angelo Hennenberg. All right, sir, good morning. Could you please state your name for the record? Uh, Michael Angelo Hindenburg, sir. All right, good morning, sir. I want to advise you the same rights I've advised everybody else so far. You have a right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a subsequent criminal proceeding. You have the right to communicate with counsel, friends, and family, and if necessary, reasonable accommodations will be provided to you. And you have the right to representation by counsel. Does he qualify for representation by the Public Defender's Office? Judge, we don't have them fill out affidavits when they have any kind of warrants, so he'd have to do that in Orange County to BRC. Okay. Can you do the, uh, hold on a second. All right, sir, uh, you, you were arrested on an out-of-county warrant here up in Orange County. In accordance with the administrative orders for the Ninth Judicial Circuit, they have 24 hours to pick you up, not including weekends or any holidays. Okay? Uh, uh, I'm going to continue to have the bond set at $2,000 in this matter. And once Orange County is able to process their paperwork, they'll transport you up here. All right. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. Uh, Kevin James McMahon. Good morning, sir. Could you please state your name for the record? Yeah, Kevin James McMahon. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I'm going to advise you the same rights I've told everybody else so far. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a subsequent criminal proceeding. You have the right to communicate with friends, family, and counsel, and if necessary, reasonable accommodations will be provided to you. You have the right to representation by counsel. Does he qualify for representation by the Public Defender's Office? Yes, he does. All right. The court will appoint the Public Defender. Uh, the court has reviewed um, the charging affidavit and finds that there is probable cause for a violation of probation. Um, the state, you wish to be heard on this matter? 
No, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Um, uh, court will set bond at five hundred dollars. Can you bond out? We can or not. Well, just fifty bucks. He does qualify for the PD and PD is being employed. All right, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Next uh, case, Ernest Todd Keene. Judge, he is detoxing. He's not here. Okay. But that's what you reset him for tomorrow. I will. I'll reset that one for tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Uh, next one is Rodrigo Olvera. Judge, he bonded out okay. earlier today. All righty. Um, then I don't have to do anything at that point. What is he? Oh, you two signed for reset. Oh, okay. yeah, sure. Justin Axial Sanchez Lopez. All right, good morning, sir. Do you state your name for the record? Good morning. Justin Maxwell Sanchez Lopez. Okay. Sir, I want to advise you the same rights I've told everybody else this morning. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a subsequent criminal proceeding. You have the uh, uh, you have the right to communicate with counsel, family, and friends, and if necessary, reasonable accommodations will be provided to you. You have the right to representation by counsel. Does he qualify for representation by the Public Defender's Office? Yes, he does. All right, the court will appoint the Public Defender's Office. Uh, the court has reviewed uh, the charging affidavit and finds that there is uh, probable cause for a violation of probation. State, do you have anything to add to this? Um, no, Your Honor. The state would just request that he remain on no bond status. Okay. What says the Public Defender's Office? Um, it is a third degree felony, so I would ask that you do set him for a, a, a bond. I know that unlike the previous gentleman, you may not set it at 500, but um, it is a felony. But I would still ask that you consider setting him a bond. State, do you have any position on that? Um, the state still requests no bond um, due to that um, this defendant is marked as a violent felony offender of special concern. Public defender, do you have a position on whether or not he's a violent offender or a special concern? I don't have his criminal history, so I, I, I can't bear, uh, dispute that or in good faith or or um, I, I agree. I just I have no arguments on that issue. All right. yeah, the court's review is the criminal history is quite extensive. The court is going to continue to set no bond on this matter. It's necessary motion can be filed. Uh, I'm also uh, ordering uh, uh, that there be. No contact with the victim uh, and not to return to the scene of the offense and to maintain any separate re uh, uh, residence. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Have a great day. <coughs> Dustin Keith Strollman. Judge, he bonded out. Okay. Thank you, counsel. Uh, uh, Alexander Ross Zell. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, sir. Could you please state your name for the record? Yes, sir. It's Alexander Ross Zell. Sir, I'm going to advise you the same rights I've told everybody else this morning. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in subsequent criminal proceedings. You have the right to communicate with counsel, friends, and family. And if necessary, reasonable accommodations will be provided to you. And you have the right to uh, representation by counsel in this matter. Uh, does he qualify for representation by the Public Defender's Office? 
Yes, he does. All right, the court will appoint the public defender's office. Uh, the court has reviewed the uh, charging affidavit and finds that there is probable cause uh, for count one battery, count two resisting, uh, instructing without violence. Uh, the court is going to set uh, a bond of thousand dollars on count one, five hundred dollars on count two. Also order that there's no contact whatsoever with the victim, Kiara Rivera, to not return to the scene of the offense, uh, which was at 2321 13th Street in St. Cloud, to maintain any separate residences. And I understand that um, uh, the victim and Mr. Sell are homeless, but I will uh, permit him to return to retrieve any personal belongings from any tent or abode uh, that he lives in. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Have a great day. You too. Tanisha Katie Wayne Williams. Good morning, ma'am. Could you state your name for the record, please? Tejana Wiggins. Good morning, ma'am. I want to advise you the same rights I've told everybody else. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a subsequent criminal proceeding. You have the right to communicate with counsel, friends, and family. And if necessary, reasonable accommodations will be provided to you. And you have the right to representation by counsel in this matter. Does she qualify for representation by the Public Defender's Office? So she did not want representation, so she never filled out an affidavit. Okay, ma'am, you, you, uh, do you intend on uh, procuring the services of a private attorney? No, so can I get a public defender instead? Uh, can I change that? That's a conversation I think you can have with the gentleman to your right right now. Okay. I, I don't know what her assets are. If she can go on, on, uh, on, um, on oath and testify still about how much she earns, her assets and so forth. Sure. Ma'am, could you raise your right hand, please? Testimony she had given me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Right. Ma'am, are you currently working right now? No. Okay. Um, do you have any money in the savings or a checking account? Uh, no. Okay. Do you receive any type of mo uh, income on a monthly basis through Social Security income or disability or anything along those lines? No. Do you have any assets that you may be able to sell um, to obtain the services of your attorney? Uh, meaning what? Like sell so what? Like any any equipment, vehicles, anything along those oh, lines. Oh, okay. Yeah. What do you have, ma'am? Uh, like jewelry. Um, I don't know, like, I could sell stuff, but I don't really know. How much, you don't know how much Not it's sure. worth or how much you could sell it for? Yeah, like, I don't know how much it's worth, but I definitely could, like, sell stuff that people would, like, want. Okay. Counsel? I have no questions. All right. Does that, does that work for you for the appointment of a public defender? That's fine, Judge. All right. Court will appoint the public defender on this. Court has reviewed the uniform charging affidavit and finds that there is probable cause. Uh, for a, a charge of using a false name or ID, um, bond will be set at $500. <coughs> Thank you, ma'am. Have a great day. You too. Reynaldo Fuentes Camacho. Judge, he will need a Spanish interpreter. Okay. I believe she's still on the line. <clears throat> Good morning, sir. Could you please state your name for the record? Reynaldo Fuentes Camacho. Reynaldo Fuentes Camacho. Thank you, sir. I want to tell you about a couple of rights that you have, all right? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a subsequent criminal proceeding. Quisiera pedirle antes de algunos derechos de los que usted goza. Usted tiene derecho a permanecer en silencio. Todo lo que usted diga se podrá usar en su contra en futuros procedimientos. You have the right to communicate with counsel, family, and friends. If necessary, reasonable means will be provided to you. Tiene derecho a comunicarse con abogados, con amigos y familias. Si fuera necesario, se brindarán los medios para ello. 
Uh, you have the right to representation by counsel, so you qualify for representation by the public defender's office. No, he does not because this is a, uh, a not a county case, Hillsborough County. It's a warrant case, but no valid deal. Okay. Um, all right, sir. Uh, actually, Madam, Madam uh, Interpreter, could you translate all that first? Él tiene derecho a que le represente un abogado, reunir los requisitos para que le represente el defensor público. No, su señoría, porque este caso es de otro condado. El condado de Hillsborough es una orden de detención por conducir sin licencia válida. Um, sir, under the administrative orders of the Ninth Judicial Circuit, um, Hillsborough County will have 72 hours, not including weekends or holidays, uh, to effectuate a transfer from here to Hillsborough County. Um, I do find that there is probable cause, and I will set a bond at $5,000. I'm sorry, Your Honor, 24 hours or 72 72. Hours? They have 72 hours Thank not you. including weekends or holidays. Thank you. Señor, según lo que establecen los mandatos administrativos del noveno circuito judicial, el condado de Hillsborough tendrá 72 horas, sin contar los fines de semana y los días feriados para uh, venir a recogerles. Se establece el inicio de criminalidad y se fija la fianza en cantidad de 5 mil dólares. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. Gracias, señor. Que tenga muy buen día. Demond Horton. Judge, he apparently um, refused to come back to the uh, chapel for first appearance. Okay. So I, was, I would ask that you reset it. Right. We'll reset it for tomorrow. We'll try again. Hunter Matthew Weber. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, My name sir. is Hunter Weber. But before we, get, before we get into all this, this is my third time here at first appearance. Uh, they're trying to say I violated my terms or conditions of my probation, but the, I, was just, I wasn't doing anything. Right, they sir, ran up on me stop, and basically. Stop, stop, just for a second. I'm okay? just trying to, uh, I got to uh, tell you, you have a right to remain silent. So anything you're saying right now is being recorded right. and can't be used against you. I understand you want to tell me your story, but I'm just advising you, you have a right to remain silent. I understand, Your Honor, but on the day of the incident, they charged me with all these charges unnecessarily. They hurt me. My hand is cut about an inch and a half deep. Uh, my finger is numb. I'm just trying to let you know I really didn't do anything wrong. When they made contact with me, I didn't have a warrant for my arrest or anything, so I'm just trying to figure out how I violated. All the charges they charged me with, I really feel like are unnecessary, and I have a history of them harming me and doing this to me. Okay. Sir, I, I, let me just advise you what other rights that you have. Other than your right to remain silent, you have a right to communicate with friends, family, and counsel. Reasonable accommodations will be provided to you if necessary. You have a right to representation. Does he qualify for representation by the Public Defender's Office? Judge, Mr. Weber is a current uh, client of ours, so yes. Okay. We have him on several cases. Okay, all right. Um, um, sir, I, I, I've read the charging affidavit. I do find probable cause. I understand that you disagree with it. But I do find probable cause. State, do you have any uh, uh, position with regard to the bond? No, Your Honor. I'll leave it in your discretion. Okay. Your Honor, also the day I was supposed to report to, uh, report to court, the day before that is when the incident happened, when I got you know all these random charges. And I was here in the jail, and then two days later, they put out a warrant for my arrest, but I was already here in jail. Okay, uh, the police right, were the reason sir. why I missed court. I understand. I understand, but that's, that's, I don't think that's why we're here. So, um, uh, he's Judge, may I, I intercede? Go ahead. May I intercede? This is a case where Mr. Weber is actually on conditional release for the violation of probation. We, we may be seeing him again tomorrow because he has another case out there which is on conditional release. So, technically, uh, um, he should not be held on uh, the VOP. That's an argument that we may have to make with the judge. But uh, there's a case called Daus. Uh, I think it's called D-A-U-S-E, which states that you can't hold somebody in jail on a <coughs> conditional release violation based on a new law violation. But again, that may be an issue we, we may have to address with Judge um, Wooten. Okay. Uh, I think you may have to take that up with Judge Wooten. Um, I I'm going to set a bond at $3,000. See, so, you know, I just want you to understand that I take care of myself. And every time I build back up, they always do this to me. I have a history of this. Sir, I uh, I, I grew sir, up I, under the household I, of I, sir, an Orlando Fire Department. His name is Alvin Chambers. Sir, I hear you. I understand. I've made my ruling. Thank you very much. Have a great day. All right, cool. Rashid Dwayne Jackson.
Mr. Jackson, could you state your name for the record, please? Excuse my honor, Judge, but I am not that name, nor do I stand assured for that name. Once again, I am not that name, nor do I stand assured for that name. Okay. The last time I am not that name, nor do I stand assured for that name. Okay, sir. All right. Well, when uh, Rashid Dwayne Jackson is ready to uh, have um, uh, his initial appearances for the two charges, we'll address that. We'll reset this for tomorrow. I do stand here as a third party intervener, authorized representative for the defendant. Okay, are you, acting as, the, are you uh, acting as the agent or representative uh, for uh, Mr. Rashid Dwayne Jackson? I do stand here as third party intervener, authorized to handle the affairs of the defendant. Okay, sir, so you asked. I would like to settle this case today, accept all charges against the defendant for value, uh, for settlement and closing. Sir, I'm sorry, today is only for the purposes of initial appearances. I'm not going to be able to do that today. Um, um, uh, to the extent that you are acting as the agent or in the capacity as an agent for Rashid Dwayne Jackson, you can advise him that he has the right to remain silent and that anything he says or that his agent says can be used against him in a subsequent criminal proceeding. You can advise Mr. Uh, Jackson and yourself as the agent for Mr. Jackson that you have a right to communicate with counsel, family, and friends, and if necessary, reasonable means will be provided to you. And as the agent for Mr. Jackson, you can advise yourself and Mr. Jackson as his agent that he has the right to representation by counsel. Uh, do we know if the agent for Mr. Jackson or Mr. Jackson himself qualifies for representation by the Public Defender's Office? Judge, Mr. Jackson did not fill out an affidavit. He did not want appointed uh, counsel. Okay. Uh, sir, as the agent for Mr. Jackson, um, uh, are you in a position to advise as to the uh, finances or amount of money that Mr. Jackson has? I'm not here to dispute any of the charges against Mr. Jackson. I am here to settle the case. Okay, sir. We for a settlement and in this day, we're not going to be in a position. Available to. We're not going to be in a, in a position to be able to do that today, sir, because Mr. Jackson, and as the agent of Mr. Jackson, I'll advise you that two charges have been brought against Mr. Jackson, a burglary of an unoccupied structure, which is a third degree felony, and criminal mischief, which is a second degree misdemeanor. Uh, the court has found probable cause. Uh, sir, you have the right to representation by counsel. You can procure counsel uh, yourself as the agent for Mr. Jackson, or you can advise Mr. Jackson that he's entitled to representation by counsel. Uh, and if, uh, if he qualifies for representation by the public defender's office, he can fill out a financial form uh, an affidavit for that purpose. With regard to the two charges, I'm going to set a bond at $3,500 for count one and $500 for count two. Sir, as the agent for Mr. Jackson, you can advise him of those bond events. Thank you very much. Uh, Monica Michelle White. Ma'am, could you please state your name for the record? Monica Michelle White. All right, ma'am, let me advise you of the rights that you have. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a subsequent criminal proceeding. You have the right to communicate with friends, family, and counsel. And if necessary, reasonable means will be provided to you. And you have the right to representation by an attorney in this matter. Does she qualify for representation by the Public Defender's Office? Yes, she does, Judge. Okay. The court will appoint the Public Defender's Office. Um, the court has reviewed the charging affidavit and finds that there is probable cause for uh, driving well under the influence of alcohol or drugs. It's a first offense. It's a first degree misdemeanor. Um, and that she does qualify for pretrial release. Council, can you proffer as to her ties to the community? I cannot because Ms. Uh, White did not fill out uh, any kind of a form, but I can uh, take questions from her. If you could, Council. Huh? They didn't give them. Huh? All right. Ms. White, uh, would you please tell us where you would be living if you were to get out on what's called pre trial release, PTR? 4823 Lescott Lane. 
What city is that in? Orlando, Florida. How long have you lived at this address? Four years. Do you own that residence or do you rent? I stay with his family. Um, prior to that, did you live in the Orlando Kissimmee area? Yes. For how long? 30 years, 40 years. <laughs> Are you a lifetime resident of yes. this area? Yes. You obviously were born here? Yeah. Were you working when you got picked up on this charge? Yes. Where at? <coughs> I work for a Vistana Resort. Doing what? Housekeeping inspector. And how long had you been doing that? Uh, a yeah. year. Can you tell the, uh, the, the court uh, whether your job would be waiting for you if you were to get out today? Yes, and I'm hoping I can so I can go and call them so that way I can go to work for tomorrow. Can you tell the court briefly who your family members are who live in the area? Reggie Dixon, um, Marvin White, which he resigned in Orlando, and my best friend, Sonia McLeod. Do you understand that if you were put on direct PTR, you'd have to report to the PTR officer by telephone? Yes. Do you have access to a cell phone or a landline? Yes, it's all in my car. Are you able to do that? Yes. Okay, thank you. I think she has sufficient, obviously sufficient ties. Court agrees. The court will issue a real, uh, release her through brief PTR. All right, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's it. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. We're off the record. Two. Uh, let me get appearances for the state and public defender's office. Patricia Blotzer for the state. Uh, Mona Abraham on behalf of the Office of the Public Defender. All right. All right, good afternoon. This is case number 2019-CF-017506. Um, sir, could you please state your name for the record? Jimmy Adolfo Perez Alvarez. Jimmy Adolfo Perez Alvarez. So the court has reviewed um, the arrest affidavit um, and finds that there is probable cause for the charge of aggravated assault uh, with domestic violence. Um, the court is going to set a bond at two, uh, $2,500 and order you not to have any contact directly or indirectly with the victim. Uh, to maintain separate residence and not return to the scene located at 1104 Oakwood Lane. Does he qualify for representation by the public defender's office? Yeah. Ms. Abraham, do you know if he qualifies for representation by the public defender's office? Uh, no, Your Honor, I believe um, uh, the, the clerk's officer. With the Spanish case, we don't have anyone here to do the do the, so okay. I'm going to go ahead and temporarily appoint the public defender's office until okay. we can vet that whole thing out. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Um, like sir, um, uh, I'm looking at the no contact order. Is this your signature at the bottom? Let's see. Did you read yes. it? Did you read it and understand this form? Let's see. Okay. All right. Yes. Bond is set at $2,500. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. My case number 2019-CF-017511, Johannes Wurzma. Sir, can you hear me? Yes. Sir, could you go ahead and state your name for the record? Tornelis Johannes Wiersma. Tornelis Johannes Wiersma. Cornelius Johannes Wiersma. Okay. Mr. Wiersma, I've, I've read the arrest affidavit. I find that there is uh, uh, probable cause for charge of domestic violence or domestic battery by strangulation. Um, I'm going to order you not to have any contact directly or indirectly with the victim, your 17-year-old son, Justin Wersma, that you are not to return to the iDrive Grand Resort located at 7050 South Kirkman, and room, uh, specifically room 120 within that resort, and to maintain a separate residence from the victim. 
bond of this amount is going to be set at $2,500. Sir, um, I've received the no contact form. Is this your signature here at the bottom? Sí, pero no es, no es el nombre. No es el nombre. Yes, but that's not the name. Your first name is not Johannes? Yes. So what, what name is incorrect? Oh, the victim. De la mamá. Yeah, this is incorrect. The mother's name. Okay. This needs to be... Okay. Can I return this to him, have him initial this? Okay. Oh, yes. May I approach? Okay. Sir, I've changed the no contact form to reflect that you're not supposed to have any contact with the victim, your son, uh, Justin Wiersma. Um, the bond has been set at $2,500. Um, we'll temporarily appoint the public defender until the requisite forms can be filled out. Okay. All righty? Yes. All right. Thank you very much, sir. May I speak? May I explain what happened? Because yes. it didn't happen like that. Um, can I speak to the interpreter? Sure. And um, if you could ask him not to make any comments while we're on the record. Okay, are we good? All right, thank you very much. Case number 2019 MM010363, Gabriel Saulucio Jacinto. I'm sorry, I'm gonna read. Please re uh, repeat the case number. Sure. 2019 MM010363. Thank you. Good afternoon. Could you please state your name for the record? Gabriel Salucio Jacinto. Okay. Gabriel Salucio Jacinto. All right. The courts reviewed the um, arrest affidavit. It finds that there is probable cause for a charge of domestic violence battery. Uh, we'll temporarily appoint the public defender until the requisite forms can be filled out. And I'm going to set bond in amount of $2,500. Sir, so you're not going to, you are not permitted to have any direct contact or indirect contact with the victim. You're required to maintain a separate residence. And you're not, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Okay. I believe there is a victim. Oh, did not see you there. Has she been sworn in? No. All right, let's swear her in. I think she needs an interpreter. You need, you need an interpreter? Yes. Okay. Madam interpreter, can you tell her to raise her right hand? Of course. Señora, levante la mano derecha para prestar juramento. Do you swear I'll the testimony shall give me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. State your name for the record. Diga su nombre, señora, para que conten el acto. Antonia Martín Juan. Antonia Martín Juan. Does anybody have any questions for her? Or do you want the court to have the inquiry? Um, I'll allow the court to do the inquiry, Your Honor. Okay. <laughs> Ma'am, good afternoon. Señora, buenas tardes. Right, good afternoon. I've, I've read the arrest affidavit regarding the little dispute that you guys had on the December 27th at uh, the Casiesa apartment complex. Um, 
Um, and based on what I've reviewed, it uh, looks like there was an act of, of domestic violence. I want to make sure that I want you to tell me what it is that you want to tell me. Señora, me he leído el afidavit acusatorio y uh, he leído lo relacionado con una disputa que ocurrió entre ustedes el 27 de diciembre en el complejo de apartamentos Casiesa y según lo que dice ese informe ocurrió un acto de violencia doméstica. Quería asegurarme de que usted me pueda decir lo que sea que quería decir. Eh, sí, este, discutimos y pues, el, el vestido que yo usaba ya tenía años. Él no me jaló ni tan fuerte, pero el vestido se rompió. Well, yes, we had an argument and the dress I was wearing, I had had it for years and he didn't pull that hard, but when he did, he tore the dress. Okay. Have there ever been any incidents of, of violence between yourself and the accused in the past? En el pasado había no ocurrido algún otro incidente de violencia entre usted y el acusado? No, nunca. No, never. Okay. What is it that you'd like the court to do? ¿Qué quiere usted que este juez decida? Bueno, que lo declare inocente porque él no es violento nunca, no se había pasado eso. Y pues que no le ponga fianza porque no tenemos dinero para pagar las fianzas. Well, I would like for you to find him not guilty because he is not a violent person. This had never happened before. And I wouldn't like for him not to have to post a bond because we don't have the money for that. Well, unfortunately, I don't think today we're going to be able to... to figure out guilt or innocence today. It's just an initial appearance. State, do you have anything further? Abraham? Yes, briefly, if I may, Your Honor. Um, are you afraid of him? Señor, el juez ha dicho que hoy no es el día de determinar la culpa o la inocencia. Le ha preguntado a la fiscalía si tiene algo más que preguntar. La fiscalía ha dicho que no. La defensa le está preguntando a usted. ¿Usted le tiene miedo a él? No. No. Uh, would you want him to come back and live with you? ¿Usted desea que él regrese y siga viviendo con usted? Sí. Yes. And um, would you feel comfortable letting the police know if something like this were to ever happen again? Y si algo como esto ocurriera en el futuro, ¿usted se sentiría cómoda avisando, dando parte a las autoridades? Sí. Yes. And would you be comfortable if he were allowed to, your, to come home, but he couldn't have hostile contact with you? Y usted se sentiría cómodo si él se le permite regresar a la casa y si se le prohíbe el contacto hostil con usted. Sí. Yes. Okay. Um, no further questions, Your Honor. Ma'am, how long has you how long has he resided with you? Señora, ¿cuánto tiempo lleva él viviendo con usted? Tres años. Three years. Have, and those three years, have you both resided in Orange County? Y durante esos tres años, los dos han vivido en el condado de Orange. No, hemos vivido eh, una, dos años y cuatro meses en Jupiter, Florida. ¿En dónde, señor? En Jupiter, Florida. Oh. No, we lived for two years and four months in Jupiter, Florida. Anything further? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Mr. Uh, Salasio Jacinto has no um, priors. He doesn't qualify for pretrial release because he doesn't reside locally. Um, the victim has testified. We ask that we do no hostile contact and um, a monetary bond be set at um, $100 if possible. State? The state would ask for no contact. And I'll leave the bond in your discretion, Your Honor. Okay. All right. 
What do you say is to no contact, period? Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Um, I would ask for no hostile contact. This is the first of its occurrence, and the alleged um, battery in this case is a, a pulled sleeve. Could you please repeat the question? He wants me to repeat the question? Um, if you could just let him know that you were asking me. Oh, I was asking your attorney what, um, um, what she wanted with regard to contact between the two. Ma'am, I have a question for you. If, if he was released to go back home, would you feel safe having him in your same home? Señora, esta pregunta es para usted. Si a él le ponen en libertad y regresa a vivir en la casa, ¿usted se sentiría segura si ustedes viven los dos en la misma casa? Sí, porque compartimos un bebé juntos. Yes, because we have a child together. I'm going to set bond in the amount of $500, and I'm going to permit contact, but it will be no hostile contact between the victim um, and uh, the accused. Bond will be set at $500, and I've temporarily appointed the public defender. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Thank you. Madam Turper, are you still here? Yes, yes, I am. I Thank you so you. much. Have a good afternoon. Yes, ma'am. You do the same. Thank you. All right. Case number 2019-MM010374, Kip Young Cornelius. Sir, could you please uh, state your name for the record? Kip Cornelius. All right. Um, uh, sir, I've reviewed the uh, arrest affidavit, uh, and I do find that there is probable cause. I have reviewed the application for criminal indigency status. Uh, and you are indigent, so I will appoint the public defender. Sure. The court finds there is probable cause for the charge of trespass in a structure, um, and I'm going to set the bond at $500. No, uh, she, she said that time for, she had five days. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I spoke to the state, and five there days. is an offer in this state. Days. Okay, time state. Sir. Hang on, sir. Hang on. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, Your Honor. The state's offer was um, an adjudication of guilt and five days um, Orange time. County Jail. Time, and the time, court costs. time. Has it, how, how long? He's been in since when? He has two days. He's got two days time served already? All right. He would like to accept that. Okay. All right. Uh, sir, um, does he have the plea form? Yeah, stay away from the Starbucks, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Have you, read, have you read the plea form? Yes, sir. Do you sir, understand time, the plea form? Time served with time credit? Yes, sir. Right. You're going to have five days. Right. You've served two, so it'll be three more days, correct, State? What, what time hang, credit? Hang on, hang on. Yes, Your Honor. Good okay. time, gang time. All right, hang on, sir. Okay. Hang on. All right. Sir, the, the plea is uh, an adjudication of guilt uh, for five days. You've served two days, so it'll be three more days, and then you'll be released. Sir, is this your signature at the bottom of this consent form? Yes, sir. All right. Thank did you. you. Did you sign it? Is this yes, your signature? You. All right. Thank you. All right, the court accepts your plea. Sir, it's important that you know that an appeal, it has to take place and be done in writing. It has to be done 30 days from today. Uh, and you'll be um, uh, responsible to pay any court costs. And you'll have January the 1st of 2021 to pay them. All right? Thank you, sir. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, I did. What's your name? Okay. What's yours? What's yours? What's yours? Abraham. Abraham. 
State, if you want to jump into the breach, uh, if there's an offer, let me know. We we could uh, shortcut okay. that. All right. Thank you. I'd appreciate it. All right. Case number two thousand nineteen MM zero one zero three five six Stephen Haddon. Give me a second. No. no? Okay. Nope. I'm just out of order. I got it. Okay. There is an offer in this case as well. All right. Perfect. I love Harley Quinn. I'm sorry, sir. Could you state your name for the record? Harley Quinn. Larry D. I mean, Larry D. Uh, Smith, my bad. Okay. All right. All right. I understand that there's an offer on the table. Yes, Your Honor. Go ahead. The offer on this one was um, an adjudication and then um, Orange County Jail with credit time served. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> And sir, uh, I just want to say in honor. Hey, hey, wait, sir. Everything, everything's being recorded that you're saying right now, okay? So you have a right to remain silent. I don't want to hear about that, the, the issues of the case or anything along those lines, all right? Hey. Sir, listen to your counsel. All right, sir, did you read and understand the plea form? Sir, I need you to... Yeah, oh, yeah. Thank you. Is this your signature on the bottom of it? Yeah. Okay, do you understand that the rights you're giving up by entering into this plea? <clears throat> yeah. Are you on probation? No. Uh, are you a U.S. citizen? Yes. All right, sir, the court accepts, finds a factual basis to accept your plea, and you'll be adjudicated guilty with time served. Uh, please note that uh, if you have any appeal to this ruling, you have to do it 30 days from today in writing. Um, any costs will need to be paid by January 1, 2021. Casey, I don't buy you taking no action. I'm taking no action. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Have a good day. All right, case number 2019, MM010356, Stephen Haddon. No, sir. No, sir. Where is he? Oh, is this Mr. Bartz? Bartz is medical, Your Honor. This is okay. Mr. Diaz. All right. He's medical. I don't know where he is. Okay. Case number 2019, CF017507, Ashmed Diaz. Sir, can you state your name for the record? My name is Ashmed Luciano Diaz. Okay. The court has read the affidavit and finds that there is probable cause for um, uh, battery by strangulation, dating violence. The court has also reviewed the uh, application for criminal indigent status and finds that you are indigent. The court will appoint the public defender. I'm going to set a bond at $2,500. So you're not to have any direct or indirect contact with the victim in this case. That's Christina Harwell. You are to maintain separate residence and not to return to the scene of the offense, which was 11424 University Boulevard, apartment 204. Sir, is this your signature on the no contact order? Yes, sir. Did you read it and understand it? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, sir.
Okay. Case number 2019-MM010357, Mikhail Cantor. Sir, could you state the na your name for the record? Mikhail Cantor. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, my birthday is July 1961. Thank you, sir. All right. The court has reviewed the... Um, the arrest affidavit finds that there is probable cause for trespass on property after warning, and the court has reviewed the indigency form and finds that um, um, Mr. Cantor is indigent. I will appoint the public defender. Is there an offer from the state on this one? Um, there, there was an offer, Your Honor. The um, offer was a withhold of adjudication and credit time served. Okay. We've discussed it um, a little bit earlier, and he would like to accept the withholding court policy. Okay, sir. Uh, offer was I paid uh, for cost, and I will be released today. Yeah. Yes. That's that's my understanding, sir. Yes, I'm handing you the plea form now for you to sign. No, you'll you'll have some time to pay the court costs. All right, sir, uh, did you read and understand the plea form? I mean, I think it's fine, but I'll show you where to sign. Okay. All right. Counsel, have you explained what he's, yes, the rights please. and remedies that he's giving up and what he's agreeing to? Yes, he understands. Right. Sir, is this your signature? Yes, I signed like this when I'm blind. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Double eight. Got it. All right, sir, are you currently on probation? Are you on probation? No. No, he has no priors. All right. Uh, I was probably never been arrested in my life for 64, 58 years. Okay. Never ever been in, uh, you know, institution like uh, correctional institution, not in Russia, not in here. Okay, all right. It's first okay. time. Yeah, oh, hang on, sir. Hang on. Okay. In my life. Okay. I got gotcha. are you. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, I'm an American citizen, 25 years since 1995. Okay. 1990. All right, the, the court finds there's a factual basis to accept the plea um, that will be an adjudication of guilt with time served and the payment uh, of court. It's a withhold. Oh, it's a withhold. I'm withhold sorry. It's a withhold down. with time served, um, uh, and any court costs will be, need to be paid by January 1, 2021. Sir, best of luck to you. Thank you very much. You're all done. Oh, sir, also. If you want to appeal your, uh, if you want to appeal uh, your plea today, you'll have 30 days from today to do so. It must be done in writing. Sir, I've got one more thing to tell you. Hang on, hang on, sir. I've got one more thing to tell you. You cannot return. To, do not return to hold on, hold on, hold on. this. Hang on, sir. Hang on. Don't return to the public supermarket located at 4402 Curry Ford Road. All right. You've already been trespassed, so don't go oh, back there. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna go there because it's kind of. All right, sir. I got it. Have a great day. Thank you very much. All righty. Is this the Mr. Junior? Great. I think we're back on track here. Case number 2019 MM010357. Sir, can I get your name for the record? Eric Jamian. All right. Mr. Jamian. Court has reviewed the arrest affidavit and finds that there is probable cause for a battery for domestic violence. And has also reviewed the indigency affidavit and finds that you are indigent. I will appoint the public defender. I see that there is a, a, a witness here. Ma'am, could you raise your right hand for me? Yes. Do you swear I'm firm the testimony shall give me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. State your name for the record. Danielle Nicole Mazel. Ma'am, how is it that you know Miss Jamie? Oh, we were best friends for about seven years, and then we got together almost seven years ago. Okay. All right. 
Are you guys in a dating relationship? Well, we consider ourselves married. Okay, all right. All right, ma'am, I've read, I've read the allegations in the arrest affidavit. It seems like there was a, a, a squabble between the two of you and some injuries to your cheek area. I can see some bruising there now. What, what is it that you're, you're here to tell the court? Um, that, that was not him. He's never been violent. He has a medical condition where his uh, ammonia levels spike up and it kind of makes him black out. So he doesn't realize what he's doing. And it was the middle of the night. We were sleeping. So he got up to go to the bathroom and I guess it was spiking and I tried to calm him down and he was just freaking out and I just kind of got pushed to the wall. But he <laughs> never hit me, he never did anything like that. How long have you known Mr. Jamie? 12, 13 years now. In the 12, 13 years that you've known him, have you ever had any violent never. interactions with never, him? Never, never. If uh, he was to be um, released, uh, would you feel comfortable continuing to, to stay with him at the KOA campground? Yes, yes. I want him to come home, yes. Because okay. he has doctor's appointment Monday, and we can get everything checked out in him. State, anything, other, anything else you'd like to inquire of the, of, uh, of the witness? Um, no, Your Honor. Is uh, Abraham? Yes, briefly, Your Honor. Um, he, he, if he were to... Um, if the judge were to allow him to have something called pretrial release, mm -hmm. meaning he wouldn't have to post a money bond, right. would you be comfortable with that? Yes, that's what I would love, yes. Okay, and do you feel safe with him being in your home? Yes, yes. Okay, and um, if the judge were to issue no hostile contact, would you still feel safe? Yes. Okay. Um, your Honor, he has no prior uh, violent history. The victim has testified. We ask uh, that he's released pre-trial release. Ma'am, how long have you been living in Orlando with Mr. Jamie? Uh, off and on for a while. We were uh, went up to Maryland for the summer, and then we were Cocoa Beach before that for a while. We just got back to Orlando about three months ago. Okay. All right. State anything further uh, or any argument with regard to the uh, Miss Abraham's position? Um. No, Your Honor. I'll leave it in your discretion. Okay. All right. Uh, the court's going to uh, release on PTR with no hostile or violent contact. Sure, sir, I'm going to have your attorney explain what that means to you. Okay? It's important that you understand that you can't raise your voice, you can't get angry, you can't throw anything against the wall. Because if that happens, you're going to come right back here. Okay? All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. We got companion cases, case number 2019-CF-017476 and case number 2019-CF-017475. Sir, could you state your name for the record? Jonathan Belcher. All right, Mr. Belcher. Um, the court has reviewed the um, arrest affidavits. Uh, in both cases and finds that there are probable cause in case number 17476 for burglary of a conveyance and in case number 17475 burglary of a conveyance and petty theft. Um, uh, sir, I'm going to set bond uh, and for set, uh, actually, scratch that before I get to bond. Do I have? I do. All right, the court has reviewed the affidavit of indigency and finds that you are indigent. I will appoint the public defender to represent you in both these matters. Mm -hmm. uh, in case number four seven, um, 17476, I'm going to set a bond in the amount of $3,500 on the sole count in that case. And in case number 17475, for count one, a burglary of a conveyance will be uh, a bond of $3,500 and count two, petty theft for $100. Sir, I'm also going to request that you not return to the scene, uh, uh, which was one or th three five one six Price Avenue. Yes, sir. All righty. Thank you very much, sir. Six hundred. All right. Here's the rest of the file.
by case number 2017-CF009572. Sir, could you state your name for the record? Billy Diggs. All right, Mr. Diggs. All right, the court has uh, read um, uh, the capias that was issued in this case and find that there is probable cause for failure to appear. Um, it also has reviewed the application for indigency status and finds you are indigent. I will appoint the public defender. I'm going to stay the bond at $1,000. Um, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Mr. Diggs is under the impression that he had already resolved this case and that this failure to appear occurred while he was incarcerated. <laughs> this case was consolidated from another case, 2017, consolidated. It was consolidated into 9572? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, nope, this case was not. Sir, based on the uh, on on the court's review and the clerk's review of, of your case file, specifically case number 2017-CF009572, uh, there was a status hearing that was held in that case on November 22nd. You did not appear for, um, and that case is still ongoing. Sir, I I believe that's the case you're talking about. I at the time I had a public defender. His name was um, Dave, uh, Baby and Golf. Okay. And they, they time served me for that grand theft. I had two counts. The one grand theft that I had, I was sentenced to a year of probation in, in uh, three months in jail. Then they, they gave me, a, then I had another grand theft, which is, I believe, the one you're talking about. And that's where I was given time served for that at downtown courthouse. But my my term my public defender was Baby and Golf. And when was that? that you got time served for that one? Um, right after, um, a little a few weeks later after the first one. Yeah, sir. Unfortunately, I'm I'm not seeing that. Um, it was consolidated. Um, I went to court for that case in was time served for that. Yeah. Sir, the court file doesn't reflect any 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 plea or any time served or anything along those lines. Yeah. Sir, you're gonna have to file your 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 the public defender are gonna have to file a motion uh, to reset this bond and figure this matter out. Unfortunately, I'm not finding. Um, um, yeah, can we just roll this to tomorrow um, and that give me one day to run through our system to see what could have happened? This, this case was consolidated back in 2017 to um, the, this, the new case here, and he is, it was three co-defendants. He is defendant B. So that it was a... Um, uh, counsel, I'll, I'll give you till tomorrow. That's okay. fine. I'll, I'll so punt till that. tomorrow. But, mm -hmm. I mean, looking at, 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 at what was all done in November of this year... Um, I was in prison. There's a status area in oh, September. Yes. And then, mm -hmm. Correct. Um, but yeah, certainly, Council. I'll punt this till Thank tomorrow. You. Okay. Let All right, so we'll reset that. this matter. Do we need to say anything for resetting? Uh, okay, perfect. No, for the defense, the additional information. All right, case number 2019-MM010356. Sir, can you state your name for the record? Steve Haddon. All right, Mr. Haddon. Sir, I've reviewed the, um, the arrest affidavit. I find that there is probable cause um, for trespass on property after warning. Uh, I do find that you are indigent based on the application that you filed, and I will appoint the public defender. Uh, any offer on this one, State? Um, yes, Your Honor. The offer on this one was um, an adjudication, 15 days Orange County Jail and court costs. Okay. Yes. Okay. He'll accept, Your Honor. Okay. All right. 
Uh, sir, we're going to hand you a plea form. And that was one five days, right? Correct, Your Honor. Thank you. I'm here. Yes. Okay. You're talking about. Um, you're talking about Mr. Diggs. Yes, it still stayed until we figured out tomorrow. Did you? I don't remember. Did I sign the second page? Yes. Okay. Cool. All right, sir. Did you read and understand that plea form? Yes, it did. All right. Uh, is that your signature on the bottom of the plea form? Yes. All right. Do you understand all the rights that you're giving up by entering into this plea? Yes, I do. All right. The court finds there's a factual basis to accept the plea. We'll adjudicate guilt uh, with 15 days um, to be served. Sir, you'll have to pay any necessary court costs by January 1, 2021. Uh, to the extent that you want to appeal uh, uh, this matter, you'll have 30 days from today to do so, and you have to do it in writing. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Have a great day. Thank you, sir. Take care of it. Thank you. All right. Case number 2019-MM010364. Sir, could you state your name for the record? Carmine LaConte. All right, Mr. LaConte, uh, the court has reviewed the uh, affidavit of arrest and <clears throat> finds that there is probable cause for both counts of trespass on property after warning and a petty theft. Um, State any offer on this one? Yes, Your Honor. The offer is an adjudication and then five days, um, Orange County Jail. Right. Um, uh, I have reviewed the uh, uh, indigency form and I do find you indigent. I will appoint the public defender. Sir, do you want a moment to discuss with the public defender the state's offer? Oh, yeah. We discussed it already. Okay, perfect. All right. So we're going to hand you a, a plea form. Take a look at that. Sir, did you read and understand that plea form? Yeah. Is that your sig Sir, I just need you to speak up a little bit more. Did you read and understand yes, that sir. plea form? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Is this your signature here on the bottom? Yes, sir. All right, sir. Do you understand all the rights that you're giving up or enter by entering into this plea? Yes, sir. All right, sir. I find there's a factual basis to accept your plea uh, for adjudication of guilt and uh, five days served, um, or five days to be served, rather. Um, uh, sir, any appeal has to be done in writing. It has to be done by 30 days from today. Uh, any court costs that are associated with this matter need to be paid by January 1, 2021. And, sir, lastly, uh, please don't return to the 7-Eleven. That's located at 605 West Colonial Drive. All right? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Have a great day. All right, case number 2019-MM010051, Andrew Maselli. Sir, can you state your yes. name for the record? Yes, sir. Sir. Can you Andrew Maselli. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, the court has reviewed the arrest affidavit and finds that there's probable cause for trespass on property after warning and does find that you are indigent and will appoint the public defender. Uh, stay, is there an offer on this one? Yes, Your Honor. The offer was an adjudication in five days, Orange County Jail. Mr. Baselli, you want a moment to talk to your attorney about that one? Um, Your, Honor, uh, Your Honor, we did discuss this. Would you be willing to take no action on the um, other case? There is no information filed in 19MM10185AL. I don't have that in front of me. The only one I have for Mr. Baselli in front of me is 2019MM010051. Okay. Um, yeah, that, the, um, he had already been I-8 on that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. This was an endorsement. He was bunted out on this case, but he bunted out before he was I-8. 
So that's why he's back down here. So it's just in case the other cases. Okay. Um, he'll, he'll accept the credit time serve offer. He believes he has eight days. Um, correction. Yes. How many days again? Can I get a confirmation on how many days he's been in? Let me see, check that. We're checking? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So you have nine days. You want to accept the trespass? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, sir. We're going to give you a plea form. Sir, do you have the opportunity to read this, uh, read and understand this form? I understand. You. All right, sir, is this your signature here at the bottom? Okay. Okay. Do you understand all the rights that you're giving up by entering into this plea? Yeah. All right. I do find that there's a factual basis to accept the plea, and um, that we will be adjudicated guilty uh, on the trespass on property after warning uh, and credit time served. Any costs uh, associated with this will need to be paid by January 1, 2021. Uh, if you want to appeal this, this matter, sir, you have to do so within 30 days from today, and it must be in writing. All right. Thank, Thank you, sir. Have a Thank great day. You, uh... okay. Yes, sir. Have a great day. All right. Case number... This is an out-of-county warrant from Volusia County, case number 2006032662. Sir, can you state your name for the record? Yes, it's Tad Ernest Adamitz. All right, Mr. Adamitz, the courts reviewed the file uh, under the standing admin order um, uh, here in the Ninth Judicial Circuit. Because Volusia County is not a contiguous county, uh, the other county has 72 hours to pick you up, not including holidays and weekends. I'm, I'm going to stay in. That's no, no, no. He has reporting requirements. Huh? He has reporting requirements. Okay. 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 To the DMV. Okay. All right, sir. I've, sir, I've got to remind you, you've got to put as a change of address with the DMV in the Orange County Sheriff's Office. All right. Um, uh, the court's going to stay the bond at none. And uh, if if 72 hours, not including holidays, has come and gone and Volusia County hasn't picked you up, that they'll bring you back in front of me or somebody else. Okay. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. Yes, sir. Mr. <coughs> All right, case number 2018 CF016998. Sir, can I get your name for the record? Joshua Matthews. All right, Mr. Matthews, the court has reviewed the affidavit of arrest and finds that there is probable cause for uh, the violation of probation, um, uh, false imprisonment. Uh, I've also reviewed your affidavit of indigency and find that you are indigent and I will appoint the public defender. Um, I'm going to stay the bond at none. Yes, it is. Yes. yes. All right, sir, you'll see Judge Whitehead within five to seven days from today. Okay? All right, thank you very much, sir. Case number 2019 MO002019. Sir, could you state your name for the record? Sean Anthony Mascara, sir, Your Honor. Mr. Mascara, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, the court has reviewed the arrest affidavit and finds that there is probable cause for the charge of disorderly conduct. Uh, and he has all the court has also reviewed 
uh, the application for indigency status and finds that you are indigent and I will appoint the public defender. State, is there an offer on this? Yes, Your Honor. The offer was an adjudication in seven days Orange County Jail. Okay. How long is how long is he? Uh, he's been in for two. Okay. Yes. All right. Have you had the opportunity to discuss that with counsel, Ms. Yes. Abraham? Yes, sir, Your Honor. All right. It uh, looks like you're going to be, do you, do you accept that plea? Yes, sir, Your Honor. All right, sir. Go ahead. We've handed you a plea for him. Go ahead and take a look at that and sign it. Okay. All right, sir, did you read and understand that form? Yes, sir, Your Honor. Is that your signature that appears on the bottom of that form? Yes, sir, Your Honor. Do you understand all the rights that you're giving up by entering into this plea? Yes, sir. All right, the court finds that there's a factual basis to accept the plea, uh, and it's a plea of guilt. Um, uh, and a time of seven days and credit for two days served. So five yes, more sir. days to serve. Yes, sir, Any court costs that are affiliated with this matter will need to be paid by January 1, 2021. And any appeal, sir, that, need, that you'd like to take in this matter needs to be filed 30 days from today and must be in writing. Yes, okay? sir, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Have Thank a great you. day. Yes, sir. You can. Case number 2019-MO002021. Sir, or ma'am, hang on, this is not, is this Miss Corbett? Yes. Okay. Where's Mr. Rich? Rich's behavior. Okay. Um, Your Honor, if we may, in Eric Rich's case, can we appoint the PD in that case? Um, sure. He's been um, found incompetent. Okay, let me just put, let me just get it clear on the record, counsel. Okay. Case number 2019-MM002021 in the matter of Eric D. Rich. Uh, the court has reviewed the uh, application for criminal indigency status, finds that he is indigent, will appoint the public defender, has reviewed the arrest affidavit, does find that there is probable cause. Okay. Thank you. You waive his appearance and we just doing the IA? Uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and waive his appearance. Okay. Yeah, I'll stay the bond at 250. Okay. Um, would we be able to release him ROR? He was found incompetent just on the 13th of this month by Judge Tynan. And I didn't have that many of my paperwork. He's current out on ROR. He is out on ROR? On another case. On another case. Was he adjudicated incompetent in this matter? No. Um, okay. Just in, in that case. Okay. It's an Osceola case. I do see that. It's a competency review set for uh, on March the 11th. State, what say you? Ms. Blotzer? Um, I'll leave it in your discretion, Your Honor. I did find the um, that he was found incompetent out of that As Osceola ca kit bleh, case. <laughs> Ms. Abraham, where is where is um, Mr. Rich currently if he's been ROR'd? He um, was not admitted to a state hospital. He should be receiving treatment um, with our office through Aspire. Okay. All right. Would, would that be a, if he's ROR'd in this, would he be receiving similar treatment? Yeah, through Aspire? Yes, if you want, um, you can have him release ROR and to follow the recommended treatment in case number 19 CF 1703A. Okay. OS. All right, that's what the court's going to do then. The court's going to um, ROR him and to follow treatment in. Case number, I think it's 19? Yeah. 19 CF 1703. That was OS for Osceola, right? Yes. Uh, thank you, Counselor. All right. All right. Ms. Corbett? Yes. All right. Case number 2019 CF 017510. Ma'am, if you could just state your name for the record. It's Amira Corbett. Court has reviewed the um, uh, arrest affidavit and finds that there is probable cause for aggravated battery with deadly weapon in count one and count two, resisting officer without violence. Uh, the court has also reviewed the application for criminal indigent status and finds that you are indigent and I will appoint the public defender.
All right, I'm going to set the bond for count one at $2,500. Count two will be stayed at $500. Ma'am, you're to have no contact with the, um, with the victim in this case. Um, um, Ms. Ratliff, you're to maintain separate residence and not return to the scene of the offense at 2411 West Gore Street. Yes, sir. Uh, Ma'am, did you read and understand this no contact order? Yes. Is this your signature at the bottom? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you much. I'm sorry, Mr. Rich, was not on that hostile location. Taking no action on that? Taking no action on that one. Correct. All right. Thank you very much, ma'am. All right. Let me just make sure I'm signing the right spot here. Okay. Cool. Case number 2019-CF1. 7512. Mr. Jenkins? Yes, sir. Sir, could you just state your full name for the record? Brian D. Jenkins. All right. The court's reviewed uh, the arrest affidavit in this case and finds that there is probable cause for count one, domestic battery by strangulation, count two, battery domestic violence, and count three, battery domestic violence. The court has also reviewed the indigency. Uh, status application finds you are indigent. I will appoint the public defender. All right, sir, I'm going to set bond in each. Um, each count four thousand dollars. You are not to have any contact directly or indirectly um, with the victim. Juliet Civil, and you are not to return to four five four six three Clarcona Key Boulevard, apartment number nine one six. Um, and you are to maintain separate residences. Here is Mr. Licanti. Right. Sir, did you read and understand this no contact order? Oh, he left? <laughs> That's okay. I'm sorry, when I slid on the paper, I think he assumed I was... No worries. Sir, did you read and understand this no contact order? Yes, sir. Is this your signature on the bottom? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Have a great day. All right. Case number 2019-CF17523. Mr. Miller? Yes, sir. All right, sir. Could you state your full name for the record? Roger LeBan Miller. All right, sir. I have reviewed the arrest affidavit and finds that finds... I find, rather, that there is probable cause for uh, count one, the attempted burglary of an occupied structure, count two, criminal mischief, uh, and count three, stalking. Um, sir, I've also reviewed your um, application for criminal indigent status, uh, and uh, unfortunately, you are not, uh, you do not, the clerk has determined that you are, do not meet indigent status, so the public defender's office is not going to be able to represent you in this matter. You, if you want representation, you're going to have to attain private counsel. Okay. All right. Uh, with regard to, um, let me just review this for a second. Okay. All right. With regard to count one, I'm going to stay the bond at five thousand dollars. Count two, I'm going to stay the bond at one fifty, and count three, I'm going to set a bond at three thousand five hundred dollars. So you're not to have any direct contact or indirect contact. Um, um, uh, with the victim in this case, Miss Siplin, Janice Siplin, you are not to return to the scene of the offense, 818 Erickson Avenue, uh, and you are to maintain any separate residences. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right, thank you very much, sir. Uh, with regard to this no contact order, sir, do you read and understand this? Yes, sir. Is this your signature at the bottom? Yes, sir. All right, thank you very much, sir. Have a great day. I'll give you a sign his fingerprints. <coughs> Case number 2019-CF17524. Ma'am, could you state your name for the record? Charity Lachey Nellums. All right. All right Ms. Nellums, the court has reviewed the arrest affidavit and finds that there is probable cause 
um, for um, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and battery domestic violence, which is the second count. The court also has reviewed your uh, indigency affidavit and finds that you are indigent and I will appoint the public defender. On count one, I'm going to set a bond at $2,500. On count two, I'm going to set a bond at $2,500. You're not to have any contact directly or indirectly uh, with the victim uh, in this case. Uh, Brandon Warren, and you are to maintain separate residences, and you are not to return to uh, the address 2743 Bent Willow Circle, uh, Unit B. Right. Ma'am, did you read this no contact order? Yes, sir. Is this your signature at the bottom? Yes, sir. Did you understand the no contact order? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you very much, ma'am. Have a great day. Case number 2019-CF-017455. Sir, can I get your name for the record? Sir, can I get your name for the record? Darius Van Buren Sermon. All right, Mr. Sermon. The court has reviewed the arrest affidavit and finds that there is probable cause for a charge of aggravated battery with a weapon. And pub probable cause was already found uh, by virtue of an affidavit. Oh, no, scratch that. I'm sorry. Um, Court has also reviewed your application for criminal indigent status, finds that you are indigent, and I will appoint the public defender. Um, State, what is your, um, do you take any position with regard to a bond amount in this case? Um. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. I did not see the witness there. Ma'am, could you raise your right hand for me? Yes. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right. Can you state your name for the record, please? Keontae Glover. All right. Ms. Glover, um, um, how long have you known Mr. Sermon? About seven years. Okay. What's your relationship with Mr. Sermon? He is my boyfriend. I'm sorry. Say, speak He's a little bit. He's my boyfriend. All right. How long have you been in an intimate relationship as a boyfriend and a girlfriend? Mm -hmm. um, about two years. Okay. Have you ever had any arguments in the past? Um, uh, scratch that. Have there ever been any violent outbursts or anything, any incidents of violence in the past between you and Mr. Sermon? No. What is it you'd like this court to do? Just give him anger management classes. Okay, well, I'm not going to be able to do that today. So today's just an initial appearance, okay? Okay. Ms. Abraham, do you have any questions? Um, are you afraid of him? No. And um, do you live in the same home? Yes. Okay. Um, if he were to be released, would you want contact with him? Yes, he helped me with my kids. Okay, how many kids do you have? Together, one. Okay. Um, if the judge were to allow no hostile contact, would you feel safe? Yes. Would you contact law enforcement if anything like this or any violence were to happen again? Yes. Okay. Um, no further questions. State? Um, the state has no questions, Your Honor, and we'll leave it in your discretion. Okay. Ms. Abraham, I understand that, that and, and I thank the, the, um, the victim for, for showing up and testifying today, but I am concerned uh, because the allegations show, reflect the throwing of a butcher knife which bounced off the victim's chest and almost hit another coworker. Uh, I'm concerned um, that putting them back into an environment again um, uh, together uh, may lead to another another incident. I'm I'm worried about that. Um, so um, I, I'm gonna set a bond uh, at four thousand five hundred dollars. I'm going to order no direct contact or indirect contact um, um, with the victim uh, to maintain separate residences, to not return to the scene of the offense, uh, which was, um, do you guys work together? Ma'am, do you guys work together at World of Beer? Yes, I'm his boss. Okay. All right. Does he work full-time or part-time? He's full-time. Are you full-time as well? Yes. 
Is it a situation where your hours are always overlapping each other? No, this was the first time. No, 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 but I'm saying your work hours, when you're working during the week, like you're working Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, he's got similar hours as you? Yes. We basically, like, exchange the car and the kids. Okay. How many kids do you have, ma'am? I have two, but one with him. One with him? How old is the, how old is the child? She's three years old. I'm still going to keep the bond at 4500 I do find there is probable cause. I'm still not going to permit any direct contract or indirect contact and require maintenance of separate residences. And, sir, you're not to possess any weapons or firearms. All right. Okay. So, Your Honor, is that no hostile contact when they do have to? I, I will have it as no hostile contact okay. because it's, it's problematic because they work together. Right. And to have it as no contact sets somebody up for failure immediately. So um, it will be no hunt, uh, hostile or, or, or violent contact. I do. All right. Thank you very much. No. Okay, case number 2019-MM001169. Ma'am, could you state your name for the record? Uh, Ja'Kayla Burton-Johnson. All right, Ms. Burton-Johnson. The court has reviewed the arrest affidavit and finds that there is probable cause for uh, domestic uh, battery, uh, or I'm sorry, battery domestic violence. Uh, state, is there any offer, any, anything on the table for this one? Um, the state does not have an offer at this time. Okay, all right. Um, the court has also reviewed your application for criminal indigent status, finds that you are, unfortunately, the court has found that you are not indigent. So, ma'am, you don't qualify to be represented by the public defender's office. If you want counsel in this matter, you're going to have to retain private counsel. Income with her spouses in her arrest affidavit. Okay. She makes. Um, she'll testify that she makes seven hundred every two weeks. Ma'am, how much do you get paid every two weeks? Um, if I'm working forty hours, about seven hundred and fifty dollars. Are you normally working forty hours a week? Sometimes it all depends. Okay. What do you? What do you know? What you're paid hourly? Uh, like eleven fifty an hour. Depending. I'm sorry, eleven fifty an hour. It's eleven fifty. Yeah, and then on weekends I get a fifty cent raise. Okay. So Twelve. Okay. Okay. All right. The court will, um, uh, ma'am, at some point in time, you are going to have to fill out another, an updated form just so that the records reflect it. Um, but the court is going to find that you are indigent for the moment uh, and will temporarily appoint uh, the public defender. <clears throat> ma'am, do you live with Mr. Tillman? Uh, I do not. Okay. All right. All right, ma'am, I'm going to set a bond. Um, at $2,000 in this matter. I do find that there is probable cause and I'm uh, going to order no direct contact or indirect contact between yourself and uh, Mr. Tillman. Right. Ma'am, is this your signature on the no contact form? Yes. Did you read it and understand it? Yes. All right, very good. All right, thank you, ma'am. Case number 2019 MM001171. Ma'am, could you state your name for the record? Lacey Pereira. But the courts reviewed the arrest affidavit and finds 
uh, that there is probable cause for count one battery uh, domestic violence. Huh? Oh, I didn't see you there. Hello. Hello. Ma'am, could you raise your right hand for me? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Go ahead and state your name for the record, ma'am. My name is Geraldine Pereira. Okay. All right, Ms. Pereira. What, what would you like to tell me? Um, that's my sister. She's a year older than me. Um, she's been going through a lot of really stressful, really traumatic things in her life this last month, causing her to do this. This is not something that she, she's not normally aggressive. Um, I believe she needs mental help and may possibly an anger management class. Um, she needs to speak to a therapist. She was Baker acted about two weeks ago. Um, I feel like she's going through a mental breakdown and this wasn't, she's not being herself lately this last couple weeks. Okay. How long, I mean, I know you guys are sisters. You've known each other basically since birth until yes. cognitive thought started. Um, uh, how long have you guys, are you, are you guys living together? Yes. How long have you been living together? All our life we've lived together. She did move out for approximately a year at one point, okay. but she's been back home for like two years now. Is there anyone else in the house other than yourself and um, uh, Ms. Pereira? Yes, my mother. Um, I have another sister, her husband, her two kids, okay. and my boyfriend. Okay. It's a full house. Yes. Um, Ma'am, if, if, if Ms. Pereira was released um, on... on on a pretrial release and was permitted to go home with no hostile contact, would you feel safe? Yes. All right. Uh, have there ever been any incidents of violence in the past between yourself and your sister that you can remember? Um, when we were young, yes. You know, just as children, but not as okay, we over, became... Okay, after the age of 18? No. Okay. All right. Anything further for Ms. Abraham? Um, you'd be comfortable with her coming home? Yes. And you want contact with her? Yes. No, nothing further. Okay. All right. Uh, the court is going to um, uh, PTR Ms. Pereira uh, with uh, no hostile or violent contact uh, with her sister. Thank you. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. No, no worries. No worries. Thank you. Your Honor, did you appoint the public defender? I'm sorry. I did not. Thank you. <laughs> the court has reviewed the application for criminal indigency status and finds that the defendant is indigent. I will appoint the public defender. Case number 2019 MM001171. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Blotzer. You're welcome. Okay, case number 2019 CF 017225. Sir, could you state your name for the record? Ricardo Bradshaw. Your Honor, if we could waive the reading of these charges. State? Any objection? I have no objection. All right. Uh, the court will waive the reading of the charges. Um, um, the court has reviewed the application for criminal indigency status, finds that, the, uh, that Mr. Bradshaw is indigent. I will appoint the public defender. Um, the state, is this a uh, punishable by life felony? Okay. If I may, Your Honor, the clerk, uh, as this, the clerk site as listed on there is a third degree felony. What's the case number? 2019 CF 0172251. Your Honor, um, our system is showing that the arrest charge is a um, second degree felony. Charged, I'm just going to read the statute, with 794-0114A. 
and when the court looks at the statute, it says it's a felony of the first degree, punishable by a term of years not exceeding life, or as provided in 775082, 775083, 794.0115A, it's still a first degree. So the court's question remains the same. Is it a punishable by life?
Your Honor, from reading the statute, I do not believe this one is um, a life. Okay. In that case, Your Honor, I, I believe that Mr. Bradshaw is entitled to a bond. State, any opinion on a bond? Um, Your Honor, the state would ask for a no bond because of the seriousness of the allegation. And how can, how can I do that? What would allow me to do that? Your Honor, can I request a 24-hour reset to determine if this is a life? Uh, Your Honor, I believe it would be improper to hold my client. Um, he has no cr criminal history. There's no constitutional reason why he needs to be detained, no bond. State, what's, what's the basis? That, that would, would allow me, what's the basis that would allow me to, to make a finding that there's no bond if it's not a PBL? In the state, I had, I, the state has no um, legal basis for the no bond. Okay. Right. <coughs> Court's going to set a bond at seven thousand five hundred dollars. Court finds that there is probable cause. Uh, and further order, no direct contact or indirect contact with the victim. Oh, did I appoint public? I did appoint public defender already, didn't I? Let me, well, let me just do it anyway. I did the app application for agency find that he has indigent. I will appoint the public defender to the extent we didn't already cover that. Thank you. A lot of balls in the air right now. <laughs> Case number 2019-CF-013912. Sir, could you state your name for the record? Daniel Delacruz. All right. Sir, are you also known as Luis Anthony Sorio? Uh, yes, sir. All right. All right, we're also here on case number 2019-CF-13786. Right, in, uh, in the first matter, case number 2019-CF-13912, the court finds that there is probable cause. I don't think I have one. Huh? Court has also reviewed the application for criminal agency status. Finds that you are indigent. I will appoint the public defender in both matters, case number 13912 and case number 13786. In case number 13912, um, I'm going to stay the bond at $1,500. Sir, you now have no contact directly or indirectly with any of the victims, co defendants, or witnesses in this case. And in case number 2019 CF, 13786. Um, I'm going to set the bond on count one. Uh, actually, scratch that. Um, I reviewed the uh, affidavit for arrest, and I do find that there's probable cause for count one, fleeing and eluding, fleeing and eluding, and count two, driving while license suspended. I'll set the bond at count one at two thousand five hundred dollars, and count two at one thousand dollars. Two. 
One thousand. For the driving while license suspended? Yes. I think that's it. Oh, okay. Did he sign the no contact yeah. form? Yeah. Okay. Did he sign a no the first one, there was no contact. Sign a no contact when a, um, <coughs> oh, okay. Never mind. Scratch that. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Case number 2019 CF 017501. Sir, could you state your name for the record? Ralph DeMarco. All right, Mr. DeMarco. The court has reviewed the arrest affidavit and finds that there is probable cause for the count or the charge of burglary to an unoccupied structure. The court has also reviewed the app, uh, app, indigency application finds that you are indigent uh, and will appoint a public defender. The bond will be stayed at $3,500. And sir, I'm gonna order you not to return to the scene of the offense, uh, the uh, Child's Place Daycare located at 2301 East Michigan Street here in Orlando. All right, yes, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Case number 2019 CF017509. Sir, could you state the name your name for the record? William Morris Hicks. All right, Mr. Hicks. Um, now the court has reviewed the uh, arrest affidavit <coughs> and finds that there is probable cause for a uh, charge of driving while license suspended with two prior convictions. State, is there an offer on this one? No, Your Honor. It is, it is a felony. That's, that's why. Okay. Um, the court has also reviewed the application for criminal indigency status, finds that you are indigent, and will appoint the public defender's office. <coughs> Bond will be stayed at $2,500. Sir, in, in the other case that you're out on bond in case number 2019 CF015513, um, uh, pursuant to floor statute 9030471 and uh, the Parker decision by the floor Supreme Court 2003, I'm going to order that you be detained without bond in that case. In the first case? Yes, sir. I, uh, I can't get it reinstated. You're going to have to file a motion for that. Uh, Your Honor, would we be able to revoke the bond and then set a new bond in that case? State? Um, I'll leave it in your discretion, Your Honor. All right, well, what, does the Parker decision allow me to do that? I believe so. It's a, I, I'd have to review it again. Um, but I, do, I don't believe there's anything against reinstating, a, issuing a second bond after the first one was revoked. Was he, he was 15. Oh, Your Honor, um, I also noticed that an information hasn't been filed in that case. Okay, has the time run for the filing of an information? No, Your, no, Your Honor. Okay. State any objection to the, to the court setting a new bond in case number 2019-CF-015513? Um, no objection, Your Honor. Okay, all right. All right. Court will set a new bond in one five five one three in the amount of twenty five thousand dollars. Twenty five thousand. The original bond was fifteen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's the answer. It's up to you. You can say if you got a bond, it's better than no bond. All right. There we are. Okay. All right. 
There were? No. Okay, hang on, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I got that one. This one here is 2,500. Yeah, but what was Hang on a second, I may need to revise this. So count one the tamp in case number 2019 CF0155513, count one tampering with or harassing witnesses, victim or informant, but new bond will be set at ten thousand dollars. Count two felony battery bond will be set at fifteen thousand. All right, case number 2019-CF-009527. Hi, ma'am, can you state your name for the record? Mary E. Lucate. Ms. Lucate, the court's read the arrest affidavit finds that there is probable cause. This is a failure to appear, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, there was a capius that was issued for failure to appear. Excuse me, sir, man, look. I Ma'am, a capius was issued. I'm not going to be able to do anything about that today, unfortunately. On count one uh, for the failure to appear with regard to the possession of cocaine, the court's going to stay the bond at 2,500. On count two, the failure to appear on the possession of drug paraphernalia, the court is going to stay the bond at the uh, $100 amount. I'm sorry, Adam, there is a bond in this case? Yes. 2,500 on count one and 100 on count two. Oh, okay. So you have a I did show up the first three times. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, we've got a couple companion cases here. Case number 2019-CF-017491. 2019 CF 017488 and case number 2019 CF 017489. All right. Sir, could you state your name for the record? Devontae Moore. All right. Um, uh, the court, well, let me, let me just tackle this first. The court has reviewed uh, the application for criminal indigency status um, and sir finds that you do not, the court has found that you do not qualify for representation by the public defender's office. Um, why is that? Uh, the take-home pay is $1,300 every two weeks. Is that how much you make, sir? Uh, yeah, just about. Okay. Mm -hmm. After tax, just about, yeah. Like, uh, not every two weeks, no, every, every month. So, all together. Okay. It's yeah, that's okay. what I was trying to talk to the lady. I'm sorry, I was trying to talk to the lady about it earlier, but they told me to wait because um, they were still trying to get everything figured out. I told her that um, she asked the wrong thing. I don't know. Yeah, every month I make. Yeah. How much do you get paid every two weeks? Every two weeks I get paid about seven something. Okay. All right. If that's the case, yeah, and like, you qualify, I'm going to need you to file an amended application for criminal indigency status with the correct amount, sir. Yeah, um, I, just, I was trying to tell her that. But, all right, hang um, on. Um, but temporarily, I'll appoint the public defender. Um, with regard to case number 2019 CF 017491, the court has reviewed the arrest affidavit and finds that there is probable cause for the three counts, count one, burglary of conveyance, count two, criminal mischief, and count three, tampering with physical evidence. Um, the court will stay the bonds uh, for count one, 3,500, count two, 150, count three, 150, uh, and sir, I'm gonna order you not to return to the scene of the offense. In case number 2019 CF 017488, the court has reviewed the affidavit of arrest, finds that there is probable cause for all four counts 
burglary of a conveyance, tampering with physical evidence, count two, count three, petty theft, count four, criminal mischief. The court will set the bond on count one, 3,500, count two, 150, count three and four, $100 respectively. And in case number 2019 CF 017489, um, the court has reviewed the uh, affidavit of arrest, finds that there is probable cause for both counts, count one, burglary of a conveyance, and count two, tampering with physical evidence. The bonds will be stayed at uh, 3,500 and 150 respectively for counts one and two. Thank you, sir. He's got one more. Yep, I was just about to see that. All right, case number 2019 CF 017490. Mr. Moore, could you state your name again, please? Uh, Devontae Moore. All right. Um, has reviewed the um, arrest affidavit, finds that there is uh, probable cause for the three uh, charges, burglary of a conveyance, criminal mischief, and tampering with physical evidence. Um, sir, based on the colloquy that we just had on your finances, I'm going to temporarily appoint the public defender in this matter subject to a new application being filed. Uh, count one, the bond will be set out $3,500. Count two, $100. Count three, $150. Yes, and no return to the scene. I didn't check that box if you could. So I'll take it over Oh, yeah, thank you. Is it? Oh, where's Miss Emerson? 2019 MM00. She refused. She refused? Yeah. All right, we'll reset for tomorrow. That's case number 2019 MM008135. We'll be reset for tomorrow. 2019 MM 004776. Sir, could you state your name for the record? Um, excuse me. I refuse. I refuse to. Um, I'm sorry. I refuse to state that because that will that that will say that I'm uh, the fictitious name on here. Okay. And I am not the fictitious name. Okay, sir. Uh, well, when Mr. Miles uh, is in a, is ready to uh, uh, to speak to the court. Um, uh, regarding uh, this matter, that yeah, I would like to. I I would like to speak on this matter. I would I would not give myself as a surety in this case. Okay. I would not give well, myself so as a surety. Mile, when Mr. Miles is ready to to to, to speak to the court uh, I'm regarding, I'm okay, I'm sir. When Mr. Miles is ready to speak to the court regarding these charges, then we can have them. We'll reset this matter for tomorrow. No. Has the been appointed in this case previously, Your Honor? I don't have a financial affidavit. Okay. Can I say it? Um, it, I believe it's a failure to appear. It is. Let's look. Nope. Are you putting that out of me? No. I'm not a sovereign citizen. That's kind of oxymoron. Sir, there was a letter that was delivered to the court on or about December 16th. To the fictitious recital. Okay. All right, sir. When Mr. Miles is ready to, uh, to, to speak to the court and to have his initial appearance, then we'll have it at that time. Thank you, sir. Have a great afternoon. You want to just um, appear briefly as Mr. Miles? I thought that's what we came here for. Okay. So tell him the name on the page. But I'm, I'm going to let you know that that is a fictitious okay. recital, and when I am Mr. not Miles liable. Ready, when Mr. Miles is ready to appear for his initial appearance, and we can have back, we'll reset this matter for tomorrow. Thank you. Case number 2019-CT-009307. Sir, could you state your name? David Gunter. All right, Mr. Gunter. All right, the court has reviewed um, the arrest affidavit, finds that there is uh, probable cause for a, a, a charge of driving under the influence. I don't have, oh, here we go. Court finds that you are indigent. I will appoint the public defender. Thank you, sir. 
I believe Mr. Gunter qualifies for PPL. I was just about to say that. Uh, I am going to, uh, I'm not going to set a bond. I'm going to uh, PTR uh, Mr. Gunter. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. So, Mr. Gunter does? Yes. No. Yes. Okay. Case number 2019-MM-001173. Mr. Gunter, if you could just state your name for the record again, sir. David Gunter. All right. The court has reviewed the arrest affidavit. In that matter, it does find that there is um, probable cause for a charge of resisting officer without violence. And I will appoint the public defender in that matter as well based on your indigency affidavit. Ms. Abraham, what's your position on this one? Oh, um, if we could pre-trial release them as to both cases. State? No objection, Your Honor. Okay. All right, he'll be PTR'd in uh, uh, the misdemeanor 11373 as well. Thank you, sir. Case number 2019-CT-009310. Right, sir, can I get you to state your name for the record? Jose Luis Rodriguez Ruiz. Okay. Mr. Ruiz, the court has reviewed the arrest affidavit and finds that there is probable cause for uh, a charge of driving while license suspended with knowledge. The court has reviewed your affidavit of indigency and finds that you are indigent. I will appoint the public defender. the defendant's name uh, is Jose Luis Rodriguez Ruiz thank you state do you have any position with regard to bond in this matter um, I do not have a position your honor I'll leave it in your discretion it was PTR in the yellow sheet case so why do I have an order with Bob? He got no arrest. So if he got no arrest, I don't think I would do that. Okay. 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 Because I didn't see a bond. It's because it said it detained without bond in the above style case. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. In case number um, 2019 CT 009310, I'm going to stay the bond at $500. In case number 2019-CT-009233, because he was already out on pretrial release on a driving while license suspended matter, I'm going to order that he be detained in that matter. Um, so you'll be revoking pretrial release? Correct. Would you be able, um, would, could we request your honor to set a bond in, count in that case? State? Um, no objection to setting a bond. Okay, fine. I'll set a bond in five, as five hundred dollars and count our uh, case number two thousand nineteen CT zero zero nine two three three. Thank you. Uh huh. So this one will be the five hundred dollars bond rather than no. Was the public defender appointed, Your Honor? Uh, yes, I believe I had that. I did. Okay. To the extent it was not on the record, Thank yes, you. the public defender has Thank been appointed. You. Case number 2019-CT-009311. Sir, could you state your name for the record? Yes, I'm sorry, sir. Say again. Oh, I can't hear you. What's your name? Uh, Lop Tran. Okay. Mr. Tran, thank you. Well, the court has reviewed the affidavit of arrest and finds that there is probable cause for a uh, driving while license suspended with knowledge. The courts reviewed the uh, application for indigency status and finds that you are indigent. I will appoint the public defender. Um, I'm going to stay the bond at $500 in this matter. Okay. 
what they feel they have to pay through there or what? Yeah, if you're a bond, if you're a bondsman. Okay. Also, I found that this one here, but can you bounce this one on record? He was the need for behavior, but was there. Okay. Um, wait, that's the yellow sheet. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, it's the, um, Is it 17486? Yes, it is. Okay. In case number 2019-CF-017486, and case number 2019-MM-010349 regarding Aldoberto Rodriguez, both matters will be reset for tomorrow. Correct. So both of those will be reset for tomorrow. Okay. Right. Case number 2019-MM-010377. Sir, could you please state your name for the record? Street. Nehemiah. I'm sorry, sir. What's your name? Nehemiah Street. Oh, here it is. I got it. They were just out of order. That's all. Mr. Bennett, Mr. Ravante Bennett, Bennett. Bonded. he bonded, mm -hmm. and Monica Maria Rodriguez Castro. She's a mental health. Yeah. Okay, so we'll reset her for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. All right. So just so the record's clear, it's case number 2019 MM 000557, Mr. Street. Uh, the court has reviewed the. Um, Rast affidavit and finds that there is probable cause for petty theft. Court's going to stay the bond at $500 and order you not to return to the scene of the offense. The Wawa located at 901 North Orlando Avenue. I believe there's an offer in this case, Your Honor. There is? All right. State? Yes, Your Honor. Um, the offer on this one is an adjudication and five days um, Orange County Jail. Mr. Street is interested in the offer. Uh, we ask that you take no action on his pending cases, and information has not been filed in um, any of them. Okay. State, with regard to the one, two, three, four, five other matters, um, has the time for the filing of an information ran, run? Um, give me one moment, Your Honor. Uh, I don't believe so, but he was released on his own recognizance. I do see that. He's given notices to appear. ROR, ROR, ROR. He was ROR'd on four out of five. He was given a notice to appear um, uh, in the misdemeanor 2019 MM 507. Right. Ms. Blotzer, is what Ms. Abraham stated is the plea accurate? Um, from what I can tell, yes, Your Honor. Okay, all right. We interested in moving forward on that plea? Um, it's just five days. Just five days. I don't know. Yes. 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 All right. Are you taking any action on all the other cases? Or you I'm not taking any action on the other ones. Fine. Sir, did you read and understand the plea form you just signed? Sir, did you read and understand this plea form you just signed? Sorry, did you say yes or no? On yes, sir. Verbally. Thank you, sir. Is this your signature here at the bottom? Yes. Do you understand all the rights that you're giving up by entering into this plea? Yes. All right. The court finds there's a factual basis to accept the plea and will adjudicate guilt with five days. Five days time served or five days to be five served? Days. Five days uh, and two days. Yes, correct. Yes. All right. So five days of time to be served with credit for two, leaving three days remaining. Any court costs served will need to be paid by January 1, 2021. And if you want to appeal, you'll have 30 days from today to do so, and it must be in writing. Yes, he's going to need fingerprints. And there's it's no action on those five No cases. action on the five other cases. Of course, I can take any action. Okay. Thank you. All right, case number 2000. Uh, it's an out of, it looks like it's an out of county warrant. Case number 2018. I'm sorry. Case number 18729 CFA in Seminole County. Ma'am, could you state your name for the record? Brittany Abrams. All right, Ms. Abrams. Uh, it looks like we've got an out of county warrant here. Um, because Seminole is a contiguous county, they'll have 24 hours to pick you up, not including the weekends. So they may be able to pick you up on Monday. Um, court does find that there's probable cause and is going to stay the bond. Um, if something happens that you are not picked up 
um, then we'll just they'll they'll bring you back before a judge on a different day. Okay. All right. All right. Saddle run to on the case. On which one? Uh, 19 CL 0 1503 1 AL. Okay. Two, um, two charges. Control substance. All right, that's the Seminole County case. Or is that here? It's an Orange County case. Office has been appointed in that case. I'd ask that you take no action. State? Um, the state has no objection to taking okay. no action. I'll take no action in case number 2019 CF15031. All right. Thank you, ma'am. I'm sorry, did you mention that? I know that you said you stayed the bond. Is that at zero or is it a bond? The, no, the bond is stayed at zero. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, so, she got two. She got two cases, right? Yes, she does. Hang on. She also has uh, case number 18141 CFA in Seminole County. She got three cases? Three. 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 Okay, so yes, it is actually still. Okay, it's just two. Okay. Yeah. All right, so in, in 18141 CFA from Seminole County, it's an out of county warrant. Um, I found the probable cause was was proper. Uh, I'm going to state the bond at zero in that one. Same same process. The administrative order requires 24 hours, um, not including weekends. Yeah, and we can't do anything because we're orange County. Okay. They don't pick me up within 24 hours, 24 hours but then we'll bring you back in here. Okay. All right, thank you, ma'am. All right, this one's another out of county warrant, case number 17003404CF10A. Mr. Kamara? Hey, how you doing, sir? Good, sir. Could you please state your name for the record? Yes, my name is Amaro Kamara. All right, sir. Uh, court finds that there is probable cause. Um, it's an out-of-county warrant from Broward County because it's not a contiguous county. It's all the way down in South Florida. They have 72 hours to pick you up, not including weekends or holidays. All right, so I'm going to stay the bond at zero. And um, if 72 hours from Monday, I guess it'll be after the holiday, after the new year. If Broward County hasn't picked you up by then, they'll bring you back in front of another judge. All right, um, can I just say something about it? Okay. Sir, I, I, I prefer that you not. You have a right to remain silent. Anything that's said can be used against you. So I don't really want you to talk about your case. Okay, so when do you, so they don't, they got it until? They got it. Seven All right. So. All right. Case number 2019 CF4309. Sir, could you please state your name for the record? How you doing, Judge? My name is Francisco Claudio Muniz. All right, Mr. Claudio Muniz. We're here on an out of county warrant uh, to Osceola County. I do find that there is probable cause. Um, um, because they're a continuous county, they'll have 24 hours to pick you up, not including the weekends or any holidays. So I'm going to stay the bond in that um, for the out-of-county warrant at zero, or I'd rather add no bond, um, and we'll just have to wait to see uh, if Osceola County picks you up 24 hours once the week begins. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, sir. All right, case number, uh, this is another out-of-county 
2000, I'm sorry, 173914 CFB from Seminole County. Sir, could you state your name for the record? John Lamar Jones. All right, Mr. Jones, I find that there's probable cause uh, for the out-of-county warrant. Uh, because they're a contiguous county, they'll have 24 hours to pick you up, uh, not including weekend or holidays. I'm going to stay the bond at, uh, at no bond uh, for this matter. All right, thank you, sir. Yep. Uh, case number uh, 2009, I'm sorry, 19-14019-CF from Pinellas County. Sir, could you state your name? Uh, that's not Miss Williams. Where's Miss Williams? 